is the Hyper C Drone Next Labs in Frame. I'm Dimitris, team pal for Drone Next Labs, and today I'll be showing you how to build it. So let's go over what tools and supplies you need. 400 grit sandpaper, a pair of cutters, and various sizes of filing keys. Loctite, a lighter, and scissors. A soldering iron, some flux, and solder. Helping hands are always helpful. Let's take a look at the electronics of the quad. Motors, Cobra 2204-2300KV. Four of them. ESCs, little bit 20 amp. Flight controller, Nazer 5. This board uses the STM32F1 CPU that is slower than the F3 and F4 CPUs but it still flies great and it's a super cheap board. Power distribution board. This is the Matuk one, I ended up not using it because it doesn't have both a 12 and a 5 volt output. Camera, HS1177 or similar form factor. This is a great little compact camera for small FPV quads. Video transmitter, Foxier TM200. This one is the SMA version. Alright, so let's move our electronics aside and get to the frame. Separate the carbon parts so we can finish the carbon. Rough edges are bad for your wires and your fingers. The process is simple. Dump the carbon part in some water and sand the edges. Make sure you're in a well ventilated area or wear mask and goggles otherwise. Getting every little bit is important. There are two ways to build the Hyper C. For reference, we we'll call the plate on the left bottom plate and the plate on the right reinforcing plate. As you can see, the reinforcing plate is a lot thicker. You can build this quad with either the bottom plate on top of the reinforcing plate or vice versa. I prefer the bottom plate on top since it's thinner and it also gives more space inside the quad. So let's start building. The arms are secured with two screws. The four holes closer to the middle are for your flight control standoffs, so leave them aside for now. Use lock nuts whenever you can. It's pretty clear now that those holes are for the flight controller and power distribution board. The purple screws are going in opposite to the arm screws. Leave the purple ones for now and let's install the rest of the arm scene. Tighten with an allen key and a wrench. Insert the purple screws from the bottom and screw in a small standoff. Do this to all four. Time for the motors. Spill some Loctite somewhere, preferably not a paper towel. Dump a screw inside, through the arm and screw the motor in. I only use two screws per motor. Move the quad aside and let's prepare the ESCs.
Peel the sticker off and save it for later. You might want it for aesthetic reasons. Cut part of the heat ring and peel it off. Desoldering the motor wires is easy. Put some solder on the connections, heat it up and pull the wire. Make sure to retain the connections with first solder. Now we'll connect the ASCs to the motors. Place the ESC where you want it and estimate where the wire needs to be cut. You can see I left a bit of extra wire since it's overlapping the ESC. Cut part of the installation off. Be extra careful and hold the wire so it doesn't rip off the stator. You can use wire cutters if you want. Twist the cables and put flux on them. Slowly apply solder to thin them. Solder the wires on the ESCs. Ok, we're done. Now cut some hitching that's about 5mm longer than your ACs. Pass it through the wires and over the ESC. Make sure it's centered and hit it with a lighter or a heat gun. Now grab some rubbing alcohol and clean the ESCs from any black spots from the lighter. Use some double sided tape to hold them in place. Zip ties are also recommended. I ended up using this Happy Model power distribution board. It's basic, but it works. Secure it on the helping hands. Apply some flux and tint it. I use these rubber anti-vibration balls that come inside DVD readers to protect the wires from the carbon. Insert it in the battery wire hole and cut the bottom off. Pass the battery pigtail through. You may need to use something like an allen key to help it pass. Flex the wires and tint them. I've cut mine at about 12 to 13 centimeters or 5 inches. Solder the wires to the PDB. Power your PDB with a battery and make sure all the outputs have voltage. Also check the 5V and 12V outputs.
Flux all the connections and tint them. Cut all ESC wires to the appropriate length, flux, tint, and solder them on the PDB. Leaving some extra wire doesn't hurt. Clean the power distribution board with rubbing alcohol if you want. Make sure your flight controller isn't touching anything on the bottom. I put some hitching over the battery lid to protect it. Grab some servo connectors and remove the white wire using a blade. Estimate the length needed for the 5V input of the nays and cut one of them. Solder it on the power distribution board. I'm going to be using an alarm on my nays, so I need voltage directly from the battery. I did this after installing the power distribution bolt, so soldering was tricky. Ok, so it's time for your FPV. You'll need an extension pigtail if you want your video transmitter protected. Screw it in, pass it through the hole in the top plate and secure it into place. Cut some double sided tape and secure the video transmitter on the top plate. Grab the two brackets for the HS1177. This is where they go. Pull them out and screw the camera in. As you can see in the wiring diagram for the TM200, white is power and blue is ground. Red, black and yellow plug straight in the camera. Solder white and blue on the power distribution board. We're almost done. Grab the nase board and pins. Insert the pins through. 
especially for small solderings like this, clean your soldering iron very well. I like to solder the two corners first. Make sure everything is straight and move on to soldering the rest of the pins. I'm going to be using a DSMX satellite as a receiver. Chop the wires at an appropriate length. Pin pin 4 on the nays. The 3 volt output from the bottom and the random ground. Decide where you want your wires coming off. Solder the one furthest first and then the rest. Black is ground, grey is signal and orange is 3 volts. Put the nays back in place and secure with plastic nuts. Use some double-sided tape to secure the receiver. Plug the ESC wires in place. Front right is number one. Move clockwise. Take the standoffs and small screws and install them on the bottom plate. Put the top plate in place and screw everything in. As you can see, changing the angle of the camera is super easy. Install an antenna and it's time for the first power on. No magic smoke, so it's all good so far. I made my antenna pretty by heat shrinking it and spray painting it. We're done! Okay, so it's time to set up our NACE board. I have my NACE plugged in. We're gonna head over to Google Chrome and I'm gonna search for NACE two drivers click the second link I also have all the links in the description so no need to search and stuff uh, download the one appropriate for your Windows version uh, you probably have seven and up so download the first one and, and install it and uh, then we're gonna head over to this I will also have this in the description this is the beta flight um, page on github uh, you can see the latest beta flight is 2.5.0 rc1 it's a pre-release though so i'm gonna head over to the latest release which is beta flight 2.4.1 find my flight controller which is the nace in this case and download it in a folder that you know where it's gonna be i already have it downloaded so we also go to the chrome web store and search for clean fight. This is it. Uh, there's going to be a button here to download it. I already have it, so I don't have to do that. Okay, so let's move on to clean flight. Uh, we're going to go into firmware flasher, load firmware local. If you want to flash beta flight, if you want to flash normal clean flight, you go up here, you find your uh, flight control. In my case, it's an ace and you click load firmware online and you flash it but we're gonna load it locally go to beta flight 2.4.1 and i'm gonna click full chip erase if you want to do that do it it just wipes everything so i'm gonna flash it if you're updating from a from a previous version uh, don't click full chip erase because you want to keep your settings so it failed i'm gonna do it again that's a usual thing Okay, so it's successful. I'm gonna click connect 
and if I move my quad around you can see uh, that moves so it's working properly I'm gonna go into ports uh, choose serial RX since I'm using a serial RX uh, on the UART2 I'm gonna go into configuration um, choose RX serial go down here turn it to 2 kilohertz also go into Spectrum 2048 since I'm using a DSMX receiver and I'm also gonna type 270 in the YO adjustment because uh, my USB is on the right, if your USB is on the left, click 90. So we're gonna save and reboot, make sure you always save and reboot. That's pretty much it for now on this page, we're gonna move on to failsafe. So you can see failsafe stage 2 is enabled and I put it into drop. Okay, so we're gonna go into CLI and type set spectrum underscore sat underscore find equals 9 if you're using a DSMX receiver like I am and 5 if you're using a DSM2 receiver so I'm gonna put it into 9 and type save okay so we'll disconnect take off the USB wire I'm gonna turn on my transmitter Okay, so we'll disconnect, take off the USB wire. Now I'm gonna plug it in again. And by clicking the bind button on my transmitter and turning it on, it should bind. Okay, so we have everything bind correctly. We're gonna go into connect, go to CLI and type our previous command and type zero. That's so it doesn't bind again, so save. Alright, so we can move into our receiver tab and well, something's wrong. Well, I have to choose the JR and Spectrum channel mapping. So, roll, this is right roll, this is left roll, this is back pitch, front pitch, right yo, left yo, full throttle, zero throttle, and my auxiliary to switch. Uh, I already have this transmitter set up on a quad, so that's why everything's correct, but if you need to um, uh, reverse something, do it now. I also needed to widen my throttle endpoints on my transmitter for it to work, but it should be right. So you can see that my yaw is fiddling around, so I'm gonna add a bit of deadpan here. Five should be enough. I'm gonna add a bit on the RC deadpan as well. So RC rate, I'm gonna move into 180, RC export to 0.90, I guess. That should be good. And RC US export to 0.30. Save that. I'm gonna go into modes, check arm, air mode, and aqua plus. You can see uh, my auxiliary to switch right here. So I'm gonna put that on all of them. And this should be disarmed. This should be only armed, and this should be air mode and aqua plus. So I'm gonna pull that up to there, pull this up to here, and also this. Click save so you can see it. now it's disarmed. Now it's armed only, and this is air mode, acro plus, and armed. Okay, so we'll move over to the receiver tab and set our minimum and maximum values. So my minimum throttle is 1073. I'm gonna go into configuration and put that in. Always save and reboot. Receiver tab again. I'm gonna go into full throttle 1914. All right, and middle throttle. Mine's about at 1491, so it's pretty close to this. Alright, that's it for now. So I'll go into PID tuning and pull up some PIDs I have. Okay, so that's it for the PIDs. I will have my final PIDs uh, down in the description. Okay, so now we need to calibrate our motors after we've set our minimum and maximum throttle. So we'll go into the motors tab, check this little box and put this into full. Obviously, no props on. And while this is on, you plug in your battery, you wait a bit and then you pull this down. I have already done this with this quad, so I'm not going to do it again, but it's very simple. At this point, also check what motor uh, needs reversing. In my case, 1 and 4 needed reversing, I think, so we'll go into BL Heli now. Okay, so this is the BL Heli suite, and what we're going to do is go into select ATML, Scilabs interface. The little bits are Scilabs, so we're going to go into the 
first uh, five uh, options. We're going to program them through clean flight, so click that. Go into COM4, connect. COM4 is on my PC, your PC. It could be totally different, you need to find out yourself. So right now I'm gonna plug in a battery. And I'm gonna click check. You can see it, uh, it recognizes our little bits. And I'm, I can update them if I want, but I'm not gonna do it right now. Uh, what you do to update them is go into Flash Build Heli and just put the latest one on. So we'll go into ESC number one. Okay, so let's go over the settings a bit. I have not touched anything right here, so let's go over this. Auto direction on my ESC number one, it needs to be reversed. I did not touch this. Uh, PW frequency slash damped. I put it into damped light, so there's braking on the motors. Enable PWM input needs to be off, so one shot works. Motor timing for Cobras, I think medium high is the recommended. That's what I've been running for a while and it works. I've also changed the beacon delay into 2 minutes instead of 10, so if I lose my quad, like in the woods or something, after 2 minutes it will start beeping. And this will be calibrated before in clean flight. So. It's the same on ESC number 2, just motor direction no normal, ESC number 3 is the same as 2, and 4 is the same as 1. So that's about it on uh, programming your ESCs, it's pretty easy actually, uh, especially with how beta flight has evolved now. Alright, we're done setting up the quad, you can go ahead and do a line of side flight, make sure everything is working correctly, and then move on to FPVing it. I want to thank Drone X Labs for sponsoring this build and keeping me in the air. I really hope you enjoyed this video and have fun with your Hyper C.